So I'm going to talk about what is possible, what works, what not. I will show you a lot of examples, only projects which we did during the last two uh, years here in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. Um, so uh, it's a hype, but it's always good to think back. When I studied physics at M in Munich, uh, the Bild Zeitung titled, It's not possible to win chess. One year, one week later, uh, Dupli, uh, Dup, uh, Deep Blue has been winning against Kasparov, and it changed the chess play. So, uh, and today you can load down this as an a, a app for free. So it's a kind of disruptive smart assistant, what you see here. And this existed all the time. So machine are becoming more intelligent. And this is what I'm going to talk about uh, in the next uh, half hour. In uh, 2011, uh, we have been, um, this was the date of birth of Jeopardy. Who saw this video on YouTube? Please raise your hand. So for AI uh, conference, a lot of people didn't see it. So go there and have a look how the Watson computer here in the middle actually has been winning and answering complicated questions out of all type of uh, sport, history, science against these world champions. And the most important point is look at the face of Brad because he understands in this point in time he will never, ever, ever win again this game. So here, this was a major quantum leap in artificial intelligence in terms of natural language processing and, and uh, answering questions. So we talk here this about, our, about AI. It does not mean that the systems are intelligent, but from outside, they seem to be intelligent. So they can be very dumb inside. Uh, they are learning, so a lot of the hype is around that they are becoming better learning, and when the uh, artificial neural networks becoming deeper and deeper, you, you talk about deep learning, and, and that's what uh, is going, uh, uh, the hype. You see here the Gartner hype cycle. Um, at, at the top of the trend, you see where the hype is really uh, hot, and that's why it's all newspapers and the conference, you, you see deep learning, machine learning, so, uh, and, and so everybody talks about it, and what is then happening that the people test it and say, oh, it's too expensive, oh, it's too slow, it does not work, and so a kind of realism takes place, and then one or two years later, it's all over, and then actually your company, your organization, either made it happen and you have an advantage, or you are losing against uh, disruptive models. So now we'll have a look. Uh, which of these upcoming technologies, the, the, in, uh, this uh, uh, curve shows all future trends of, on Earth in all uh, industries, in all countries, so which are coming in the next five to ten years. And you see uh, uh, the red ones are linked to deep learning technologies. And that's why you can see uh, AI as a new electricity. So you should really uh, think about it. It will not disappear, uh, and it will be uh, everywhere in everything. And uh, so you, it's very uh, actually important. And general, it's a general purpose uh, um, technology. And you see what is coming now in the next five years is your conver conversational user interface, augmented uh, data discovery. So the, t the, uh, the, the algorithm will become more intelligent and more active. And, and I show you a, a project, a project debater, which we actually uh, did in uh, January. You can see on YouTube. So this is the next version of Jeopardy, where the machine called debater. She will be arguing. Please a bit louder, please. This is debater. This she will be arguing for the resolution. We should subsidize preschool, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, project debater. Greetings, Harish. I have heard you hold the world record in debate competition wins against humans, but I suspect you've never debated a machine. <laughs> Welcome to the future. <laughs> I will argue that we should subsidize preschools. We are going to talk about financial issues, but not only about them. So here you see it's a machine debating the pro and cons of a, a particular thesis. Here, do, do you should we put public money into preschools? And now the world champion is actually arguing against this uh, topic. One of the, that's your kind of wizardry as well, and you're very good at it. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our uh, debater arguing against the resolution we should subsidize preschool, Harish Natarajan.
Well, thank you very much, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here for this historic event. And it certainly was a pleasure to listen to Project Debater. There was a lot of information in that speech and lots of facts and lots of figures. The problem, though, is the reality of subsidizing preschools is one which does not deal with the underlying problems in society. It is one which often makes those worse and in the end is very little more than a politically motivated giveaway to members of the middle class. So now what was happening? You saw the little boys jumping from the machine debater. She was listening and now thinking how to answer now this uh, speech about not to put public money in preschools. And, and here in the last snippet from uh, so the debater. So now we move on sure. to round two rebuttals. And again, each side will have four minutes to respond to the opponent's arguments. First, with her rebuttal, Project Debater arguing for the resolution, we should subsidize preschool. Thank you again. For starters, I sometimes listen to opponents and wonder, what do they want? Would they prefer poor people on their doorsteps begging for money? Would they live well with poor people without heating and running water? Giving opportunities to the less fortunate should be a moral obligation of any human being, and it is a key role for the state. To be clear, we should find the funding for preschools and not rely on luck or market forces. This issue is too important to not have a safety net. So what you see here that the machines are becoming more in intelligent, more proactive and even go deeper in the semantic of what does it mean so that you can extract arguments pro and for a certain title. You can do your own project debater projects, uh, look in the internet. What I'm now showing you uh, is what is today out in the market here in DACH with four narrow use cases, so you know super intelligence not, not available, artif general artificial intelligence not available, but narrow artificial intelligence available, and here the opportunities are highly underestimated. So here the companies, your organization, you need to be quick to uh, really follow the trend. And the four are here C and write, the Watson Assistant, C and recognize, visual recognition service, uh, generate knowledge and uh, Watson Discovery Service and speak and listen to speech to text. So uh, AI-based services help you to automate a simple intellectual tasks like the tractor on the field, uh, physical work, now here simple intellectual tasks. And I'm showing you now examples on these four different use, use cases. So the first is read and write, the Watson Assistant. Here you see an uh, uh, internet page you can check out. I, I listed here from the Inter Insurance, and they sell through an automatic robot based on what's an assistant here, uh, teeth insurance. So you, you can answer questions here in German language. If you are regular at the dentist, you get a discount bonus F and you buy it. And the board of the company claims I'm actually selling 100% more than before. You, so you can check it out and buy Saturday night here at Interinsurance. Funny, they call it EFA, the Empathic Versicherungsassistent, the Empathic uh, Insurance Assistant. So you might want to check out. I like the T's here jumping, but uh, they call it EFA. See and recognize here actually visual um, uh, um, uh, recognition um, services come in place here. A startup called AnyLine from Austria. They are doubling every year based on visual deep learning capabilities, like here, uh, the Wien police. Uh, you can recognize uh, the immatriculation plate here of this VNW or, or your passport or other cars, and they help actually to automate the recognition of visual patterns. We are doing a project called Ask Mercedes uh, now for the last two and a half years uh, with Daimler together. It's live out. Uh, look at the car outside for all uh, A class, E class, C class, S class. If you buy a Mercedes, you get it. Who, who is driving a Mercedes here in the room? So you can check it out. <laughs> Uh, or uh, take a rental car, and you will get uh, Ask Mercedes, uh, and uh, here you can talk to it, I can show it you, I have it on my mobile, and it will answer to you, for instance, how to save fuel, or you hover in the car, because it's a rental car, you don't know all the buttons and lights, hover, and it recognizes for instance, 12 speedometer, and then uh, you want to know what is the speedometer about, so you, you click on speedometer, because there's a yellow light, you don't know what does it mean, yellow light, and then you see, oh, yellow light is the yellow control brake lamp. 
and you learn, do, you, do I need to stop, can I go on? Uh, so the, the people like this because it's, you can talk, you can write, you can click on these ships and it explains you the car. More than 300 different, different, different topics are covered in a driven chatbot. And we have been in this project against the Google, the Amazon, the Microsoft of the world, and uh, Microsoft uh, and uh, Daimler is today running up to planning up to 20 projects on this AI platform. I show you what the worldwide responsible of customer service of uh, Daimler is telling on YouTube here in a discussion in a Mercedes sitting with, with uh, Sascha Pallenberg uh, about Ask Mercedes. So what I have is Ask Mercedes, our first virtual assistant in the car and also mm -hmm. outside the car. So whatever you want to know about your car, how can I charge my telephone, what kind of drive modus mm -hmm. uh, am I able to choose, um, you, you are able now to simply ask your virtual cognitive assistant. We integrated the augmented reality for the first time in our digital product. So what you can do is, you can simply choose here Look oh, on that I see. and you see, for example, that whatever you have in terms of manuals here, right. what to choose, what kind of button is for what type of thing, yeah. whatever it is, Ask Mercedes will be able to answer all your questions. I love that. He answers also questions in terms of whether he's still available, he would like to marry you. So it's not only a chatbot, it's a true virtual assistant. Uh, with all the other, let me say, Alexa, Ho Alexa for example, Google Home, so yes, we are yes. able, let me say, by also linking our service, our product. It's only the first, and let me say, the beginning of our digital transformation. Love it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. So you heard the last sentence, it's only the beginning of our digital transformation. For Daimler, BMW, Volkswagen, this is a matter of survival, to have a smarter system. Once the car are autonomous, you need to be able to talk to it. Uh, without a driver, so this is a very hard fight. And in the auto, in the innovation hub of uh, Daimler in Stuttgart, Autobahn, it's called. There are always 50 young startups actually building new models, and there is a model how you can be in the car after two years of time, get a lot of money, and a lot of this is based on our Watson platform using the services I'm showing you here. So, the third is generate and navigate knowledge. This is uh, not so showy, but actually even uh, probably more powerful because you can read with AI, a pre-trained uh, deep learning algorithm inside uh, uh, PDF documents. And what I show you here is a new capability of our Watson Discovery service called Smart Document Understanding. And in the past, it was always difficult to read documents because you, you could not understand it's a title, body text, image, or a table. Here now with this new capability, you can talk to the document and say, give me the, the, uh, the country in this table and growth, and it can read into a single field of a table. Imagine you have a company like Allianz or Telecom with millions of contracts and you want to know, uh, show me the contracts which are running out uh, this week and uh, from a million documents, you have a hundred uh, uh, contracts from Deutsche Telekom running out this week in a smart tool. So these are highly scalable capabilities and uh, this is really what you want to do as a startup. Uh, so now speech to, uh, speech to text, Roland Berger actually said it's a big new trend, speech to text. I show you a project we are very proud of and it took place in the International Space Station here. You have the wonderful view out of the space station, 400 kilometer heights, uh, uh, flying around uh, Earth several times. Uh, a day, and uh, Project Simon, the crew interactive mobile companion, the little football you see here, actually worked with Alexander Gass, he, this is the captain, the German captain of the International Space Station, who worked until last Christmas, and we actually implemented all cool capabilities now in one device in Simon to show how you really can build a nice, smart uh, companion, smart assistant, and, um, and I want to share with you this historic moment when on November 15th in the afternoon, Simon woke up. So think about it like the first art for this, who, know, who knows Star Wars? Uh, so you know the art for this. So this is a kind of first uh, art for this. And so now the moment on uh, November 
15. So this is ground station in Italy. We have been winning this project against NASA and, and others. So now the moment. Just, uh, that's for you, or what's about conclusion here? I think we need to give Alex a bit of background with what we're doing. Fly is for him to be aware of his surroundings. So after which that you detach it. Please say, Simon, wake up. Simon, wake up. Hello, I am your space companion. This is Matthias from our team, the project leader. <laughs> so these are the two projects leaders from uh, Dale Air German Space Agency and uh, Airbus. And maybe you missed what they said. This, they said this I, I, means how to write history. So in a very short period of time, in, in less than two years, this the team of some PhD, some young guys actually developed a very cool device, which is one now operated in International Space Station, helping the astronauts to do biological and chemical uh, uh, instruments, uh, uh, experiments. So they read a strap one, two, three, four, five. And uh, so uh, I uh, technically I show you how this works. So here you have the different services. So the eyes are actually here, the cameras, there are several cameras. So you can talk to Simon like to a dog and say, Simon come and then uh, Simon uh, recognize my face and uh, it's fully independent here, uh, body movement. Uh, it's autonomous flying in space at zero gravity. So it's following you and you can say, help me to do the experiment here and, and then it's coming. So these are the uh, eyes, uh, the camera. The brain is in the Frankfurt Data Center. Uh, what's an assistant? The ears are speech to text. So there are multiple microphones listening to uh, what they hear, what you talk, and then it, thinking the answer is coming back through the link. And so this is now the voice of Simon. My mission is to assist you wherever I can and to motivate you, no matter which task needs to be done. So in a newer version, uh, we can actually uh, find out up to 12 different emotional states of the person talking to Simon, and it can trigger the voice uh, Simon is using so imagine now you are far flying out to Mars and you are a little bit in a depression mode. Simon might talk to you like this. I know we are very far from home. What can I do to cheer? So that's the emotional markup language with Watson Tone Analyzer. And so this is the kind of uh, um, stereotype how you can build smart assistant and scalable tooling for business processes, for your companies, for your startups and you can operate it uh, in, a, in a very professional way. So for all this, you need software, and I show you how you can do this, and that all this is a way, one click of your, t uh, you can in one single clip, you type in, you are in the middle of the AI or catalog of, uh, of uh, IBM, uh, in our Frankfurt GDPR compliant data center, and you see all the services I, I showed you, you can use them, one second later. And for startups, it's, uh, for most of people, it's for, at the beginning fully for free. You start, you no hardware to be installed, no software so, to be installed, no nothing. You just start, right? And we see, I can see this on a, on a weekly base. I see in, in the big startup centers in Germany, Berlin and uh, Munich, I see more and more startups coming on the cloud. You can use it, and if you need, even want the computer database here, you have the different layers. Uh, so it's a fully uh, a virtualized uh, calculation center from hardware to the AI stack here. And in particular, who is a data scientist and really using himself uh, machine learning, deep learning technology in the room? So some are here. So then for you guys, the Watson Studio is an AI uh, development environment we offer, and the very cool stuff now since the uh, end of last year, it's called Watson Studio here. You can fully integrate even predictive models from the former, uh, 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 like SPSS, ILOG rule engines from the correlation world, fully integrated with the new uh, artificial networks. Then you can actually run, deploy it, and you can manage. 
And on the manage, you, most of you have seen in the talks why is uh, a lot of high managed don't want to use AI because they don't trust. No transparency, no trust is available. And with what's an open scale, we actually open a capability, a pre-trained, uh, pre pre-existing capability to monitor your AI system. Uh, for a lot of people, AI is a kind of black box. Look at the Handelsblatt uh, they, uh, or other articles, they say, oh, black box will be uh, difficult, dangerous. But with AI open scale, you get a fully automated uh, monitoring in development and in runtime, in runtime uh, of your statistical significance or your statistical errors. You know, it's all about uh, prob uh, probability statistic in, in uh, neural networks. You get this out of, and in a kind of way you can say it checks, it can check the fairness of your algorithm. So you can see, is it ban balanced between uh, women and men, young and old? Is it a good decision? Well, and, and you get actually insight into the systematic errors of the algorithm. So very nice development. We are part of the board of the German government to, to develop uh, ethical design uh, criteria, and our open scale is here in there, and we, uh, uh, we actually bring it to the European Commission so that AI in Europe and AI in Germany, made in Germany, should have this label, trust and uh, transparency uh, AI out of Germany, so that you can really prove that you know what you do and it's not a black box. So this can be a cool USB for your startup, for your company. So to summarize, I, uh, IBM as an AI partner can offer you these four really uh, very solid uh, uh, um, characteristics. The first, we have a very broad set of AI services, what I showed you before. You can send me an invitation on LinkedIn, and, uh, and I, uh, we regularly post uh, directly uh, links to what is new, so you are very well informed. The second is what I just talked about, trust and transparency into AI, uh, AI open scale, the Watson Studio, in version two now. And here, uh, um, just let me mention one thing, probably how many data centers do we have from Microsoft in Germany? Remember me? They had a calculation center with Deutsche Telekom. Terminated, right? So there is none. So if you want, in a lot of industries like finance or health, where it's legally binding that you need the data in the country, you need a calculation center, GDPR compliant calculation center in the country. And we have this in Frankfurt with several thousand paying clients up and running now for three years. Uh, so this is a very solid, good base for startups to scale. And last but not least, a big topic on the next conference might be hybrid cloud or multi-cloud, because in some areas, the people want to get their private cloud behind their firewall. Uh, big companies want this to protect. And we have this IBM Cloud Private and Watson Assistant on IBM Cloud Private, ICP. We have offerings, first offerings, fully on your private cloud in your center. This is not maybe not the thing to start for a startup, because it's not really, uh, you need really to invest, but if this is critical, we have here the first uh, solutions out and support fully hybrid and multi-cloud solutions. So to summarize, my, my advice is to you move fast, quick, and in little baby steps, but really go, 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 because there's nothing about a planning. You need to check it out. Uh, and you will see, uh, for instance, in my team, I, we built up a pretty fairly large, large team with several hundred people. The best stuff we get are the young people just doing, 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 and then invent, and you, then you are surprised what is working. So this is a really different type of work than when, when I was a, a PhD. Uh, so here, uh, 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 intelligent agent has high quality. You control the quality. It's self-service. Uh, on the weekend, in the night, you get... Uh, uh, it's available. It, it, it's not replacing people, it's augmenting. We heard in other talks as well. It stays loyal, discreet, and private. It's a familiar touch point. It can actually charge your brand of your company with, with new experience, with sexiness. It's a famili familiar touch point in crisis productivity, of course. Large scale implementation. We always have a business case, and it's really heavy. Serious savings phase. By the way, with Deutsche Telekom, we do some stuff too. And personal br uh, brand responsibility. So 
This is a kind of uh, how I think about uh, uh, typical scalable solutions uh, in 2019. And I want to summarize uh, what I just uh, talked about. So uh, AI is a, is a uh, multi uh, uh, mega trend. It will not disappear. Um, simple intellectual tasks are automated and, and support us to do better job and boost productivity and competitiveness. Uh, AI-based uh, roles and business models are emerging quickly. You earn better money, you get, you get better job, uh, you have a bright future because you, you are ramping up. By the way, uh, we described all this in this book. Uh, uh, um, with, uh, with, uh, um, ch one chapter is uh, from, from the different larger players and one chapter here from us. Success factors are that you need to collect data, uh, you need to really invest uh, higher people and uh, um, pick a partner so that the, you have software out of the box available. You should not start to install all yourself and pick the right use case. If you want to find out what the right use case is, you can come to our design and thinking centers in, in, in Munich. We have a large Watson and AI center in Hamburg and in Berlin. We do this uh, with you in our uh, centers, with our teams, model driven. And pick a, a, a pick a partner which protects your IP. Pick a partner which protects your data. You should not go with people who are uh, later on uh, putting the hand on your data, putting your hand on your IP. Uh, go with this secure GDPR compliant cloud. And again, go step by step. Create innovation and create your local AI ecosystem like here on the conference. You can send me an invite on LinkedIn or go on the catalog. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>